Hello guys and welcome back to another monthly favourites video. I'm fully aware it is the middle of March now and I'm doing my February favourites. I'm very late. I don't even have a real excuse. I feel like things have just got really busy and I just, this particular video has just got put back and put back and put back on my to-do list and now here we are and it's the middle of March. Does anyone else feel like the older they get, the more you feel like you're on a roller coaster and you can't get off and you're just literally like it's going faster and faster and round and round and you're like, I just need a minute to like just catch my breath and you just can't do it. Um, anyway, so here we are, mid-March, talking about some of my favorite products from February and the first half of March, but I do have some really good discoveries. I've got three skincare items, three makeup items, and a hair item. I'm gonna start with the makeup, because I feel like all three of these are really staple products that have literally smashed their way into my makeup bag, and I've used them basically every day since I got them. Um, first up, a base. This is from Lumine, which is a skincare brand. Lumine is a massively popular brand in the Nordic countries. I believe it's made in Finland. Um, but anyway, this hasn't until now been available in the UK, but it's like a bestseller over there, and it's super good. I've tried a couple of products from Lumine, but not like a massive range. Um, I've been really impressed with the ones that I've tried. However, this for me takes the biscuit in terms of, it's just a product I didn't even know I wanted, but it's so good. It, it, I feel like it's kind of deceptive being called a CC cream because a lot of the time people think of CC cream and they think, oh, you know, like tinted moisturizer, lower coverage. This is a medium coverage. It has SPF 20. The finish of it is so gorgeous and dewy and natural looking but it has really decent coverage. I really like it. It's very hydrating. It stays well. It, it like wears off nicely. It doesn't kind of go patchy or break up or I just really, really like it. It's a good price point as well. The RRP I think is about 20 pounds, but it's on offer on lots of places currently, I think probably because it's new for about 15, but really, really impressed with that. Straight into the makeup bag. The other one that is a similar kind of product um, that I actually got on the same day. I received them on the same day. I was like, this is weird. It's almost like they're meant to go together. Is the Aborian Super BB Concealer with Gensing. I find Aborian a bit of a hit and miss brand. A lot of the stuff I really like, but some of it, everyone else seems to like, and I'm kind of like not that sold on it. This stuff is so nice. Again, I feel like my skin is just really craving that very hydrating yet still has coverage um, type of product. Anything that's too dry on my skin right now, my skin's just like, no, I'm not, it just doesn't sit right. So nice. Like, honestly, the shade I use, oh, I forgot to say the shade I use in the CC is medium. Um, and then the shade I use in this one is nude, which I think is a little bit light, but I've been putting it under my eyes and it works really, really well under my eyes. It's a little bit light for the rest of my skin, but the texture of this, honestly, it's really hydrating. It's like that medium level of coverage. So it's still doing something, but it's not like cakey, but it still has the coverage that you want really really like it and then thirdly new mascara the l'oreal panorama mascara this is everywhere at the moment i think it's kendall jenner in the ads and it's just i feel like it's been all over social media all over the shops in boots and superdrug etc it's so good totally worth the hype another l'oreal mascara that absolutely smashes it out of the park it's also no surprise that the l'oreal group own ysl their mascaras are the best l'oreal mascara is really good maybelline mascaras also owned by l'oreal like are amazing and i just think yeah, the L'Oreal group in general know how to do mascara and this one is top notch and not too expensive. Moving on to skincare, firstly for a cleanser, the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Hydration Revival Cleanser. I discovered this doing a Mother's Day collaboration with Charlotte Tilbury talking about their skincare. I've used loads of Charlotte Tilbury skincare before. This is new. I'm not sure how new it is, whether it's like brand, brand new this month or whether it's been out for a couple of months, but it's so nice. The texture of it, I do like Charlotte Tilbury um, skincare as well. I feel like it often gets overlooked because her makeup is obviously so strong and the makeup is the big pull. The skincare is really good. And I have to say the texture of this, it's dreamy. It's a cream, but it's like a balm cream. And then you put, I feel like I've really, why am I doing this on my hand right now? I'm gonna have to go and wash it off. It turns into like this nice foam and then when you put water on it, it turns into like a cleansy, foamy milk and it just comes right off and it's super hydrating. It smells like like a spa, but not like a spa. You know, there's like typically spa fragrances that are a bit too much. It's like, it's just a very light version. It smells like relaxing. I feel like it has jasmine. 
I don't know. Either way, so nice, super hydrating. Again, my skin just absolutely loves this cleanser. And then there's also been a couple of other skincare pieces that I've absolutely fallen for this month. This one is not new. This is from Paula's Choice, but I think this is the first product from Paula's Choice that's really got me. This is the Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid. So it's a broad spectrum SPF 50 with antioxidant and soothing plant extracts. It says water light fluid minimizes the appearance of pores, helps prevent UV damage and signs of aging. Um, obviously it's an SPF, but what is special about this is the texture. I'm always on the hunt for like the best texture SPFs. And can we just take a moment for this? This is SPF 50. It is literally super lightweight. I put a lot on my hand. Rub it in. It's gone. It's like instantly absorbed. It's not greasy at all. It's like just smooths into the skin. It's almost like a serum texture. Leaves your skin really hydrated. There's no like extended massaging into your skin. You can put enough of it in and it just disappears. So, so nice. Honestly, really, really recommend that. And it's made me more interested in Paula's Choice as a brand. I feel like something about the aesthetic of Paula's Choice has never made me like, wow, super gravitated towards it. But I know it's one of those brands that when people love it, they really love it. So I feel like maybe I need to try a bit more, a few more of the products, but really, really, really impressed with this. If you're looking for a new SPF, definitely recommend. And then lastly for skincare are the new Elizabeth Arden Retinol capsules. Now, they have done retinol capsules before. So if you recognize these and you're thinking, hang on, they're not new, they are. So they've reformulated them with their kind of new formulation or special formulation of retinol plus HPR. So Elizabeth Arden actually talk about HPR standing for high performance retinol, but actually it stands for hydroxy pinacolone retinoate. I think that's how, that's the full pronunciation. I'm not surprised that they kind of came up with something else for it because it is hard to pronounce, but also hard to get your head around in terms of what it is. But essentially it's the same as gran active retinoid. If you've heard anyone talk about that as an ingredient before, it's the same. Um, and in terms of efficacy, it's slightly more effective than your typical kind of retinol esters that you're, you're getting in a lot of skincare but it is the same level of irritation. So it's less irritating than retinoic acid. It's less irritating than retinol, but you're getting a better result than the comparatively like least irritating um, form of retinols, if that makes sense. So it's more effective, but not so irritating, or it's as, as minimally as irritating as retinol gets, but it's slightly more effective than a lot of other versions is how I would explain it in a nutshell. I feel like retinol is one of those topics that you could just speak for hours and hours and hours on trying to explain it. And it, there's so many different variations on types of retinol and how it works for the skin and people react to things differently as well. Um, so it really is, it's, it's a tricky one, but in terms of product formulation and results, I really love the retinol HPR um, line from Elizabeth Arden. I was gonna say like that particular formula, but the whole line, I like the eye cream, I like the face cream, and the new ceramide capsules are really, really nice too. So if you are looking for a new option for a retinol product that isn't irritating to your skin, I would recommend that one. And lastly, Talking of hair, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen me talk a lot about my hair recently, about hair loss, hair thinning, about trying to use less heat on my hair, which obviously today I have not done. This is straightened, but I have been using a lot less heat on my hair. I've been letting my hair dry naturally pretty much every time I wash it. So if I use heat, it will be on like the second or third day. On the first day I'll have like my natural hair texture, which is like a wave, bit of frizz, but a wave. But this product has really helped so much with being able to let my hair dry naturally and look nice. This is the Philip Kingsley Pure Color Frizz Fighting Gloss. And I've used quite a lot of this. I feel like I've used this now three times when I have air dried my hair. And just to show you how much of that is, like it was at the top four, like that's quite a lot of products that goes into the hair. So what I do with this, is I use it as almost like a leave-in conditioner. I use a leave-in conditioner as well, but I put this on the ends when I'm brushing through um, after I've washed it. Then I'll put it through again once I've brushed everything and kind of um, smoothed all my hair out. I tuck these bits behind my ear 
because there's a lot of breakage here, if I leave these like out, they will dry like crazy curly. So I try and smooth those down. And then I put it through the mid lengths and ends of my hair with my fingers, really kind of like massage it through. Then I scrunch my hair to get that texture a little bit more um, uniform. And I leave it to half dry, then I put another pump in and then I leave it to dry. And then once, once it's dry, I'll go in over the top and put a little bit of tiny bit through any frizzy bits over the top. So I actually use quite a lot of product in the process of air drying my hair, but it's so good. Like I honestly, the only time I used to let my hair air dry and would be happy with the way it looked was when I was on holiday and it would dry in the heat in the sun and it dries fast. This has literally been a game changer for me because it allows me to like go on the school run with wet hair and just let my hair dry. It doesn't even matter. I don't have to be inside, outside. I can be in the, um, in the wind and it doesn't even make too much difference. It just dries really nicely. So super amazing, like absolute game changer for me. The price of this varies quite a lot across the internet. Actually, weirdly, there's lots of different places where you can get it on offer, but you can get it for around 13, 14 pounds as well. So it's not super expensive, but it's one of the best hair serums I've ever used. And that is it for my monthly favorites. Short but sweet, better late than never. I'll see you again in like two weeks for the next one, but I'm gonna try and upload um, a couple more videos in between now and then um, with a few things I have coming up for you guys. And I hope you're all having a lovely day and a lovely month in the middle of the month, the mid-month favorites. It's nice to see you all. I'll see you very soon.